I got all kinds of mail today. It was great. I got actual mail in the mailbox, and I got a FedEx box. And it's always great when somebody walks up to your house with a box, you know? That's always a good day. So, I'm going to open this up with my handy dandy little knife. Have you ever seen such a cute little knife? I'll cut you. I'll cut you, man. I'll cut you good. Now, before I open up this box, I wanted to explain something to you, but I don't want to actually teach you anything because this isn't the Praxis channel. This is the Voodoo Garden channel. I like to just talk to you and have a good time. So, I'm just going to tell you what I'm doing here, but I'm not trying to actually teach you to do anything. How's that sound? <laughs> These look like ice cream cones, don't they? From a distance, don't they look like ice cream cones? I'm not wearing my glasses, so they're kind of fuzzy, so they actually do look like ice cream cones. And ice cream would be good on a day like this because it's kind of hot outside. But these are not. These are light bulbs. Okay, here's how it works. Uh, these are called compact fluorescent bulbs, and that's because they're all squished together. They're not the long tubes, also known as CFL, compact fluorescent, uh, compact fluorescent lighting. So this one uses 26 watts of power and puts out 100 watts of light. Not a bad trade-off. So that's actually pretty good and this is what I started my light fixtures out with and my plants did really good. But then I wanted them to do even better because I thought, you know, just barely hanging on is not really what I'm looking for when I'm growing things indoors. So I got one size bigger and you can get these at your local Walmart or hardware store, generally your hardware store. These use 42 yeah, 42 watts of power, and they put out 150 watts of light. That's a lot. So I plug these into my light fixture. This is what you've been seeing in my light fixture, and they are doing great. My plants did a lot better. They were growing good, very good, I would say. And that is really nice, and it doesn't really use a lot of electricity, so they're very inexpensive to run. But I wanted them to do better. <laughs> And of course we do know bigger is better. <laughs> so I went online and I ordered this and it comes in this little coffin. <laughs> is this ridiculous or what? This is a 300 watt bulb and it puts out 300 watts of power but it only uses 85 watts of energy. Not bad, huh? So it doesn't really use a lot of uh, energy, less than a 100 watt bulb, a little bit more than 75, it's like 83 or 85 or 80 or something like that, puts out 300 watts of light. That is a bright light. Now, one last thing I want to mention about these is you can, um, there's a, a rating system anywhere between like 2700 uh, all the way up to 6500 and this is what's called the heat range or something like that. The higher the number, the more like actual daylight it is and the better for your plants it's supposed to be. I normally don't go in for that. The ones that you see at the store are generally 2700 and those are called soft white CFLs. That's what these things are. These are not. These are more of a white light, whereas the regular CFLs are kind of a yellowish light and they're very comfortable to have in your house. These are very bright, stark white light. Not the most comfortable thing in the world, but the light is a fuller spectrum and it's good for your plants. So I thought, ooh, I, uh, yeah, that's actually what I thought. I thought, ooh. So I got these and I put these in my light pictures. I bought six of them. And, um, Toss them in there and wow, what a difference. It does make a heck of a difference. The increased wattage and the increased spectrum. Now I didn't want to go to um, crazy halide lighting or any kind of strange stuff. Uh, I wanted to keep it compact fluorescent because I like compact fluorescent. I like the energy savings balanced with the cost. Now, you can get these 100 watt bulbs for, you know, a whole pack of them for like $3. A six pack for $3 or something like that. Very inexpensive. This bulb will cost you around $9. Not so bad, but it puts out a lot of light. This one costs me $19. Yeah, you might think it is, it's expensive, but when you think about the extreme amount of light that you get and you're growing indoors, you can grow anything anything indoors with that kind of light but um i kind of got an addiction going and i couldn't stop <laughs> and i couldn't stop myself so i thought well if 300 watts is good <laughs> i know i know i need an intervention and they are they're an event 
<laughs> it's beyond light bulb. I think this is phenomenal. It is just beautiful. And it's also the high spectrum light, which means it's going to be the extremely white light. And it's going to be so bright that you don't want to look into it. This is like having the sun in your house. And you would think with such a bright light, it's going to be hot. Nope. It's not hot at all. It's, it gets warm, but it doesn't get hot. I mean, you could actually touch the bulb while it's running and you don't burn yourself. All right, and now we come to the best part of the video. My favorite part of the video is the mail part. And um, not because of what I get, but the fact that I do get stuff in the mail. And I want to share it with you. I actually bought some seeds. These are deadly nightshade seeds. And they're also known as belladonna. Belladonna is an extremely poisonous, extremely deadly plant. People throughout the ages have killed people using various methods. And one way was to use belladonna. The reason they use belladonna is because the berries are extremely delicious. Birds can eat these things and it doesn't harm them because the chemical in belladonna, deadly nightshade, does not affect birds. So birds will gobble these things up all over the place. People, on the other hand, do not take well to deadly nightshade. It will kill you. It will kill you dead as a doornail. No doubt about it, this plant is deadly. It is so absolutely deadly, yet the fruit is so absolutely delicious. I mean, normally if something's going to be deadly, it's going to be bitter, it's going to hurt. You know, like you shoot somebody, that hurts. Stab somebody, that hurts. If you uh, eat arsenic, it's, you know, bitter or something like that. Belladonna is not like that. Belladonna is the sweet good night. So, although I'm not going to be murdering anybody, I thought it would be fun to grow. So I ordered these and they were extremely inexpensive. It only cost me a buck. I got another envelope and it was to Ray Browning. And then I looked at the front, it says Ray Browning. And I thought, I didn't do this. That's kind of odd. And um, apparently somebody wanted to send me seeds and didn't want it coming back to them. And um, so that was kind of cute. I didn't know who it was from until I opened it up and read the letter. It's more than a letter. It's art. See? <laughs> they were drawing all over the place. I believe this is one of my young subscribers. And um, yeah, James. James is a young subscriber. And I do have quite a few young subscribers. I, I guess it's because I cater to beginning gardeners and I, I cater to people that are getting back into gardening. So I have two different age groups that tend to gravitate towards me. Young gardeners because they're trying this for the first time and also parents are teaching their kids how to garden and so they tune into my channel because I'm apparently uh, Mr. Green Jeans of Gardening and also older people who are retired or, or who decided to get back into gardening so they tune in. So I have grandpa on one end and I have junior on the other end and um, th they're both fun people in different ways they're both fun people the old people have like this giddiness about them like oh i remember this i remember this and they're they're getting back into it and we have a lot to discuss because i like talking about gardening to anybody that'll listen and they love to talk and so we trade emails back and forth the kids on the other hand they're over caffeinated they're crazy they're weird they're fun they have all the energy that we used to have when we were kids you know because they're kids and so i get letters and there's drawings and there's words and there's smiles and there's happy stuff and they're just so glad to get a hold of somebody who isn't going to make fun of them for what they want to do and who encourages them to do what they want to do and that is me i encourage everybody to start growing if they want to if you don't want to hey don't do it plant grass and you know go play a video game but if you want to grow something i am definitely there to encourage you and that is what's so nice about the young gardeners because they have all the energy. But one thing that I've noticed with the uh, young gardeners, they tend to have the attention span of a house plant too because I've noticed a lot of these young gardeners that I encourage, they start up strong, they get going, they're making videos for YouTube, they're growing everything, and then they kind of fade off. And I think it's just because of their age. They find other things to do, you know, they find something shiny over there and they just kind of move on. They go into their teen years and they discover the opposite sex and they're out there dating or they have school, they have sports, they have the summer, and they just kind of forget about gardening. But hopefully the things that they learned and the things that they've tried will come back later on in life and they'll do it later on in life. So I still encourage them, even though they may not stick around, 
I do encourage them because hopefully later on in life it's going to come back and maybe they'll have kids and they'll teach their kids and so it just continues on and on. And this is why I keep encouraging the kids to grow. And if you ever see a kid doing a channel on YouTube, encourage them. Toss them a good comment and say, hey, you're doing good. Give them a little bit of advice. But also, you know, tell them that they're doing a good job because that's what they really like to hear. And I notice that they just get so energized when you tell them, yeah, you did this right. Because they want somebody to notice that they're doing something good. And that's what I do. So, now that I've rambled on and on and on and probably edited half of that out, um, I got so much stuff, I don't even know if I can take the time to mention this, but baggy upon baggy upon baggy. I mean, I literally have everything for a garden here from peppers to carrots, corn. Some, uh, he sent me corn and uh, cucumbers, radishes, all kinds of fun stuff. And of course, the art is going to be something I'm putting up on my wall. I got to keep this. I mean, come on. If somebody takes the time to draw me pictures like this, how can I toss it away? I think it's wonderful. And uh, by the way, James has a channel and uh, I don't know how to spell it because I can't read his writing. But James, if you're watching, which I hope you are, post a comment and let people know what your channel is, okay? Because I want them to know that you're actually doing videos. And if you're not doing videos right now, you might want to get one done because people are going to go to your channel and they're going to see your channel and wonder why you're not doing videos. So that was a fun one. Nick sent me a big old padded envelope. And um, what did Nick send me? Nick! Hey, Nick! Why am I yelling? I got a cordless mic here. Hey, Nick. Oh, Nick sends me corn too. What is it with you people? You want me to grow corn, don't you? Because I didn't grow corn this year. I keep getting corn, so I don't know what this is. It just says corn. Nick sends me corn. String beans. Lettuce. I don't know what kind of lettuce, and I, I'm taking these as basically just basic vegetables because there's no uh, subtitles. Beets, and turkey, oh, no, turnips, and um, raisin, oh, no, not raisin. <laughs> Ray can't read upside down. These are radishes. So Nick sent me radishes, and so did James. So now I have like tons of radishes. Ooh, you know, this will come in handy when I'm growing these in the winter time. So this is extra cool. This is from Helioforge. Helioforge has a channel and um, he grows all kinds of good stuff, but he specializes in strawberries. He has a strawberry patch that you would not believe. I mean, more strawberries than one human could possibly eat. And um, he sent me an email and asked me if I wanted to have some seeds because I don't have any strawberry plants. I didn't bring any with me from my old house. And I said, oh, heck yeah. So he sent me strawberry seeds. Oh, chives and garlic, ooh. My two favorite things. So I have chive and garlic, and I also have catnip. Somebody else sent me catnip too. Thank you, Pete, for sending this stuff. That was really nice. And the note. Okay, I have no clever way to do an outro here, so I'm just going to say goodbye. <laughs> Bye, folks. I'm not going to lick a light bulb for you. I won't do it. I won't do it.